In this video, I'll show you the three reasons you need power toys for Windows 10. I previously did a video on power toys for Windows 10 um, a few months back, but I wanted to do an update because first of all, power toys for Windows 10 has been updated and greatly improved. But also I wanted to emphasize the real top reasons that I use this. I have it installed on all my Windows machines and I recommend that you do as well. Okay, so the first feature that I think that's really important in Power Toys for Windows 10 is the color picker here. And this is a really useful tool here. If you simply hit the Windows plus Shift plus C key, you can use that to actually capture colors from other images or applications. So if I type in Windows Shift C, you'll see this little pop-up as I move my cursor around the screen. And once I've found the color that I'm looking for, I just simply click my mouse and this nice little pop-up appears with not only the hexadecimal code that I could use for my color choice, but the RGB code and the HSL code, which I'm not sure what that's for, but certainly I can make use of both the hex code and the RGB code for much of the work that I do. The next feature of Power Toys that I think is really crucial for e-learning designer developers would be the ability to have some improvements in the file explorer, specifically looking at the SVG. Now presently, when you view an SVG file, you're simply going to see your browser as the default icon. But with the Power Toys uh, application installed and File Explorer improvements enabled, you'll of course be able to see a preview of the actual SVG images as well. So this is really useful when you're not sure of the name of one of the SVGs that you're looking for. But if you know it from its appearance, you can certainly see it uh, in this preview here. So I'm seeing a couple that aren't showing up for some reason, but I'm sure that's just a glitch. As you can see, I can see the previews of all these vector graphics files, which is perfect because then I can bring the correct image into Adobe Captivate. I think the best productivity improvement is image resizer. And here's where you can actually take an entire folder of images and resize them to fit your e-learning project. So say for example, I wanted to add my own custom size for Adobe Captivate, I can do that. And what we'll do is we'll go with fit and we can set the resolution to be 1024 by 627 so that none of our images will be larger than our project there. And that can be saved at any time. What you do then, of course, is open up the folder where you have multiple images. You can select them all and right click and simply choose resize pictures. From here, you'll be able to see your list of different sizes and we can go ahead and resize all of our images for Adobe Captivate and you can make some choices down here. So we can ignore the orientation of pictures we can make pictures smaller but not larger and we can resize the original pictures if you don't want to make copies simply hit resize and of course now you'll have nice and small images replacing the original ridiculously large images it saves you a lot of time opening these up in photoshop and resizing them all by hand if you thought this video was useful please like and share it with your colleagues if you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.